Did you know you can add icons to buttons in Squarespace using CSS? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to grab SVG code, encode it using this awesome website so that it's ready to use inside of CSS. And we're gonna use a technique to where you can change the button text color and the icon color will automatically update as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at this awesome technique. So for today's video, I'm gonna be placing an icon to the right of my primary button. So the first thing I have to do is right click on the button and click inspect, and that'll bring up my Chrome inspect tools. And I want to apply this icon to my primary button. So now that I've right clicked right on the button, it takes me right to the element, and we can see that primary buttons get a class of SQS button element dash dash primary. So I'm gonna double click into here and just copy that class name and I'm going to paste it into the custom CSS window. And we target a we target classes with a period in CSS. So I've now opened some curly brackets and now we can write our CSS and we're targeting the primary button now. So what I wanna do is inject an icon into uh, after the button words, but inside of the button. And so what I can do for that is uh, there's two different ways that you can inject inject things in CSS. So there's before and there's after. So if I copy this down, uh, I'm going to do both. So I'll do a before and an after. And uh, these are called pseudo elements. So pseudo elements in CSS require the a content property. And so now uh, this is my before. So it's going to inject content before my target element. And so I can say this is before, and you can see I'm actually injecting through the CSS uh, into this button and it's showing up before the element. Now I can copy this content property for the after, and I can say this is after. So I've now injected two pieces of content. So before and after pseudo elements both inject content into the page via CSS. And the only difference is uh, whether it becomes before the target element. So this is coming before the text and this is coming after the text on this target element. So you can see we can actually through the CSS inject content into the page and it's not actually part of the website structure. That's why it's called a pseudo element because it's not a real element on the page. Again, we're just doing this through the custom CSS. So what I can do, uh, I'm, I want to inject the icon after my button text. So I'll get rid of the before, that was just an example. So now I have my after button text. And one thing we could easily do is just do like a right caret. And you can see anywhere I have a primary button, it's automatically injecting that right caret into the button. So um, pretty cool, but that's, you know, it's a little bit too basic for what I'm after. So I don't wanna inject any content through the content property. I want to add a SVG icon to the right of the element. So what I need to do is I need to give this element a width. So I'll do like 20 pixels to start. We'll give it a height of 20 pixels as well. I'm gonna give it a display of inline block. And this just means that I want the element to take up space in the button and I want it to be in line with the text, so next to the text. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this a background color of, we'll do white. And now we can see our square that we've injected into the every button. But the issue that we're running into is we've hard coded, we've hard coded this background color into the button. So it, that works for dark buttons, but it doesn't work for white buttons. And that's an issue that we're gonna kind of see us running up against, and I have a really cool solution for how to handle that. So instead of just injecting a background color here, what I wanna do instead is inject an SVG into the button. So what I, uh, a site that I really love for icons is called Icon Monster. It's free, so you can just use any of these icons on any project. And so what I did is I came to Icon Monster and I just typed in right arrow. And now we have all these different arrow types to choose from. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, maybe I'll try this right caret style. And if you click embed, it'll give you SVG code to use. 
Now, um, we can't just paste this SVG into our CSS window because SVG code is HTML. Um, and so that would just, it would break our custom CSS. But we can encode our SVG. And that way, what this website does, this is yoxl.github.io slash URL encoder. And this is an awesome website where you can just paste in your HTML code and it gets it ready to be used as a background image in custom CSS. And we can see our preview here. So um, if I copy this background image, this ready for CSS, CSS here, um, instead of background color, I'm just gonna get rid of this and paste in our background image. And now we can see it um, appearing in our white button, but because the background of this SVG is black, it's not appearing in our black button. But what I wanna do is I can show you how to change the style of an SVG. So what we could do is we could go style equals, and then I'll open up some quotation marks and I can say fill, and then I'll do hashtag FFF, which is white. <clears throat> and now I can copy this ready for CSS and replace what I have in the custom CSS window. And so now that it's white, we'll see it in the black buttons, but we're again running into that problem where we don't see it on the white buttons. So hard coding our SVG color doesn't really fix our problem of it not being dynamic. It doesn't change depending on the button background color. But this is very cool that we can get SVGs through uh, into our website through the custom CSS window. And right now our, our SVG, uh, it needs to be resized. So I'm gonna say background size and we'll go like 20 pixels. Um, and so that gets it a little bit smaller. I think it needs to be much smaller actually. We'll go like 10 pixels, but now we're getting a background repeat. So I'm gonna say background repeat and we'll change it to no repeat and that'll get rid of the, uh, you know, the, the repeat. And then we're gonna go to background position and I'm gonna say center. And I just have to spell it right. <laughs> Background position. There we go, so now it places it in the center. And if I right click on this element and click inspect, we can bring up our Chrome inspect tools again, and I can hover over the after pseudo element and we can see um, how big it is. So if we wanted a little bit more space to the left of this arrow, we could just increase the width uh, and so let me go ahead and do that. Maybe we'll go to like uh, 30 pixels. And so now you can see there's more space there to the left. And what I can do is I can center it on the vertical axis and then align it to the right on the horizontal axis. And so now that SVG arrow is always going to hug the right of the container, no matter how wide it is, um, it'll always hug the, the right. So now when we increase the width, we're increasing the space between the arrow and the text. So uh, the background size, let's make it a little bit bigger, maybe 15 pixels. And for the height, let's make it a bit smaller. Let's go maybe like 10 pixels is too small. Let's go 15 pixels. And then let's turn down the background size. So the size of the icon is kind of a dance between the background size and the height of the element. Maybe let's try them both at 10 pixels. And now it feels like it lines up a little bit better with the text. And then I'm gonna turn down the width a little bit. Maybe let's go down to 20 pixels um, and that feels like it's positioned a little bit better. So uh, with the background image, we're able to get the SVG in there. We're able to resize it. We can control whether it repeats and we can control its position in that container. But we have that issue that I mentioned before where it's not dynamic in that the color is just hard-coded to be white no matter what color the button is. So how do we address that problem? Well, very similarly to the background image, what you can do is use the SVG as a mask. So um, let me, before we jump into that, let me comment out the background properties. And instead of using a background image, I'm gonna go back to a, a background color and uh, there's a property called current color 
And this basically just inherits whatever the text color of that element is. So because this button has text that has a white text, the background of this pseudo element that we injected automatically becomes white. And here, because the text is black, the background of the pseudo element automatically becomes black. So essentially whatever text color the button has, that's gonna be the color of our icon. And we don't have to, you know, worry about our icon, you know, not showing up on a button ever because it's just automatically with this property going to inherit whatever the text color is. So rather than just inserting the SVG as a background image on this container, we can instead use it as a mask to mask out the shape of our SVG against this background color. And so the, the fill color of our shape is coming from this current color property here. And our SVG is just ask, it's just acting as like the cookie cutter that cuts out the shape in this object. So what I can do is copy this CSS that I have here. And so I'm gonna put it down below and we're not using our background anymore, um, but we are going to copy this URL, including our quotation marks there. And I'm gonna paste it into this URL um, property here. And now that we're not using this anymore, I'm gonna get rid of that. But now we can see our, our object is still showing up here, um, but it's looking like it's a little bit too big. So I do have to turn this down and turn this down. Okay, so just like the background image property, we can control the mask size, we can control the mask position. So I had it as center right, so I can move that over. Um, and we can also control the mask repeat. So very similar to the background properties that I showed before, uh, we can do the same thing, but again, we're just using uh, this SVG to cut out the shape, but the background com color is coming from this. So like I can change this to pink, and you'll see that everywhere now it's pink. Um, so again, it's totally dynamic now, um, and it doesn't matter what color background the button has, our icon is gonna show up the same as the text color. Now, um, we, different browsers need different prefixes in order for this to work. So we do need to have this twice. So we need the URL in the WebKit version of the mask image, and we also need the URL in the normal mask image. So uh, it doesn't really make sense to have to paste this HTML twice. What we can do to cut down on the amount of uh, CSS in this custom CSS window is to save this as a variable. So I'm gonna write at SVG and then a colon, and I'm gonna pull from the quotation mark down to this quotation mark, and I'm going to hit Control C and Control V to paste that in there. So now I've saved this whole HTML snippet as this variable here, and now I can just paste this variable into the URL making sure I delete the quotation marks. So SVG, and then at SVG here. So again, it's just taking, you know, whatever is here and pasting it inside of this URL in these two different places. But that way we only have to have this thing once. Uh, we don't have to repeat it twice, even though it needs a different prefix. And this type of variable is something that we can do because Squarespace uses the less CSS preprocessor. So variables are not something you can do in this type of variable is not something you can do in traditional CSS. Um, so that's just an advantage of the fact that, again, Squarespace uses the less preprocessor. So now with this CSS all set up, um, the beautiful thing about it is now we can just change this SVG icon to something else if we wanted to. So let's go back to our right arrows. You know, maybe we want something like this. So I'll go to the embed code. I'll copy that. I can go to the URL encoder, paste that in. Um, I'm gonna copy from the quotation marks in here because we don't want the background image or the URL part. And I can just paste that in there. And now you can see the arrow has updated everywhere and the color is still dynamic. Um, which is exactly what we want. 
And then you can come in here and change the size of things. You know, maybe this one needs to be a little bit taller. So I'm gonna change that 20 pixels everywhere. And now it's <laughs> massive. So you'd wanna come in here and play with things a little bit um, just to get it looking correct for your situation. Uh, let me try 15 in all of these places. That looks a little bit better. One thing that you can try is a vertical align. And I'm gonna do a vertical align of middle. Um, and sometimes that can help kind of place the arrow more in the center of the container. So if you feel like, you know, the arrow is the symbol, whatever H whatever uh, SVG you're using is too high in the button, then you can try aligning things to the middle. Sometimes that helps. Um, it just kind of depends on the icon. So yeah, so that's how you can put SVG, uh, inject it into Squarespace. And then when you use it as a mask, instead of as a background image, you can then use the current color property, which just pulls the text color. And that way it's totally dynamic. And an awesome thing about this is if we go to this section here and we go to the site styles and we go to the colors panel, this would be great for creating like a Squarespace theme, for example. This technique would be really valuable because if the client was to come in here and change the primary button text color, let's say they changed it to this color, you can see our symbol automatically updates um, and it's updating through the Squarespace interface because it's just gonna inherit whatever the text color is as its background color. So a really, really cool technique there. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.